of CRISPRs. That was the main thing. And also, I wanted to learn what effective, uh, what things I could do uh, to better be an effective revolutionary. What kind of strategies that maybe political parties have that we as a grassroots activists don't have and how we can translate that into our um, activities in building qualitative progressive change within society. So what, what was the main thing that stood out for you during like, the whole process of volunteering? Is there like, a significant idea or thing that stood out? What stood out for me um, was, from my perspective, there was more dem democracy in the campaigning. It was actually getting out there, building a discourse within the community, engaging with the public, you know, asking questions, and getting to know people, even if it was just for a couple of minutes, you know. Um, Tavis often talked about, um, you know, building up a public, um, a vibrant public forum, and you know this is a, this is part of it. You know, getting out there and knowing people, because a lot of people uh, don't know their neighbors. There was one neighbor that we had just a few days ago where we knocked on their door, and uh, one was uh, NDP. One, you know, we were on one side, and Chelsea and and Christopher were on the other side. And they got out and they started bantering about amongst themselves, and it was beautiful to watch. You know, in this whole process, it kind of makes me sad that everything has gone back to normal. You know, because it's the one percent that owns the owns the, the the discourse within society. So that after the campaign is over, everybody goes back to sleep again. So that was the main thing: is that you know the campaign itself was more about democracy than putting an X in the box. What I found interesting was oh shit. Hello. <laughs> what I found interesting was um, the, I guess the strategies. I I'd never volunteered with a campaign so, like so completely. And basically, the whole the whole sec the whole section the whole riding is, is mapped out into polls, and then within each poll you have reference from the last election, and you basically you know okay so in this little segment I've got. <coughs> 50 people that voted for this party last time, so we have to try to get at least 50, you know, and, and the lengths that the political, like these political parties have to go to, to get people to sign on, right? And you not only need to get them to sign on, you need to get their phone number. You don't just need a verbal agreement. Well, you need that, but then you need their phone number because you have to call them later and remind them again to vote for you. And so many people were just like, oh, stop calling me, and I, I hate that. I, I don't like selling things. I don't like selling myself or something that I, I like barely believe in, um, but that's that's what they do, right? So it, you, it's interesting because I think in order to run, you either have to be extremely passionate and totally believe that this is the process in which you're going to change the world, and that's why you're you're so dead set on it, or you're just okay with like the ideology and and I guess the almost the indoctrination that that you have to go through to, to think that that's okay to just. This is the process, keep pestering people, get them on board, get them to sign, you know, it's, I know we can do better as a society, I know we can. And the other thing that was interesting was, every day, uh, if I wasn't door knocking, I was dropping leaflets. That's a lot of work, right? Because it costs so much money to do a mail out, you can't just mail out stuff, you don't have the budget for it. The PCs might, right? The Wild Rose might, if you have corporate backing, but the NDP doesn't. The NDP is solely reliant on on um, donations from either the unions or just regular people. And an interesting fact is that if we did have minority government and there was like a snap election call, maybe six months, a year down the road, the NDP would be, they wouldn't be able to run. Like they wouldn't be able to put on a full full campaign and have candidates in all in all the different areas. So you can kind of see how that does distort our, our politi political process and how how much volunteerism is actually needed. Do you have any more questions? <laughs> or you can ask me questions. I, I haven't asked a question. Yet. No, so um, what about you? Any more questions for me? <laughs> no. Okay. Um, so I'm going to ask a couple more questions to a couple questions to. Um, 
to um, Chelsea, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, okay, so um, why did you, um, or sorry, um, what was the most important thing for you in the election? What did you learn the most of it? Um, I brought this, I brought that sign. It's, it, this whole process has been a social experiment, much like my current living situation. <laughs> and I brought home this sign and I put it in the window of our house knowing there's, we live in a duplex, there's 12 bedrooms, there's 14 people. And uh, so we put up this sign and I was expecting to hear shit back. I didn't right away. Um, I, I did get called uh, a sellout. <laughs> so did Eric. Eric got called a sellout. And then the sign went missing for a while and then it went back. But it's just that there is so much stigma on it. It's like, why? Why are you supporting this when you know this isn't this isn't going to change? You know, and that was a really interesting <coughs> thing for me to to overcome my own um, di um, my own apathy. You know, like I got involved in activism, doing <coughs> trying to get young people to vote, trying to get young people to pay attention, and then I just totally was like, that's that's not the way it's going to happen. We have to find other avenues. And now I'm kind of back here again, looking at this avenue, but from a different perspective. And there's so much to learn in terms of effective organizing, like strategize, even for simple things, even for things like, you know, convergences or rallies, you know, protests. Like we can, I, I feel like we can be way more effective if we just adopt some of these like very basic procedures. So. Okay, um, uh, some last remarks. Um, we gotta go? Um, okay, um, I just wanted to say one more thing too about um, the idea that um, as other myths, this is one of the biggest myths of capitalism is that, you know, bourgeois elections are the end all and be all to democracy, you know? And um, we've been sold this and we bought it, you know, hook, line, and sinker. And like I said, the campaign, the campaigning was more democratic to me than going to the voting booth. And I think we need to take that. That's what I'm learning more. I mean, I've always been active in my community, but it just makes me realize that, you know, these people actually believe in what they're doing. And if they could see that their organizing can also happen outside, outside of the parliamentary process, how effective could we be you know, and I think as somebody who believes in a diversity of tactics, you know, I feel that if we don't, you know, loosen our rigid ideas about, well, I'm not going to vote, I am going to vote, and realize that everything is situational, you know, you'd be amazed at how much we can learn from people. And the reason why the conservatives and Wild Rose did so well is because they got massive databases, whether you like it or not, they got amazing databases that allow them to win these elections. And they set the dominant discourse in society. So we need to realize that this is what happens. And what we need to do is we need to, like I said, take that to the streets. And like people like Chris Church, he, he was down at Occupy. So, I mean, now that, you know, it's kind of a blessing that he lost because I think he'll make it a better effective uh, activist as a result. And that's all I have to say. Are there any questions at all from the audience? Comments or questions? Anything you want to add to this conversation? <laughs> I'm wondering, what do you feel is the role of smaller parties that don't get more than a couple of percentage points of popular vote? Do you feel that they still have an important role playing the political process after having volunteered? Yeah, I think they have probably one of the most important roles. I think that those parties need to exist but they won't exist unless they have support from people like us. Even for me, like I, volu like I volunteered and was getting a little bit paid because I have the time right now, like just coincidentally, like I'm not, I didn't have a full-time job, right? If we have that opportunity, I think that, you know, if you have the energy, share it because those, those really, those small parties end up setting the, the, the dialogue. That's exactly what I was going to say, is that by sheerly existing uh, as smaller parties, they, they made a difference, you know? It's like all of you folks, you know, by doing what you do, you know, you create a change within society. And uh, 
I think the smaller parties are what we need to reach out to. You know, not just the NDP, you know, the Marxist Lands Party, the Greens, the, you know, to be like more like a, uh, one of those, Solidaire, for instance, in Quebec City, they call themselves a party of the street and the bell box. You know, we need to, uh, we need to talk to these parties and get them to be a party of the streets before they're a party of the bell box. The process isn't over. Um, we need to stay active. The Redford government, before the election, kind of talked about eliminating the golden handshake. It was a news item today. One long-standing MLA will retire with a million dollar gift from citizens of Alberta. If you wonder why people are interested in politics, don't fool yourself. Yes, they may not get paid much as an MLA, but uh, we don't. We only see the surface. So the job isn't done. We need to hold this this government accountable. So stay on your toes. Could I ask before we go if there are any suggestions for how to to lead from that? Is there any suggestions out there from the audience, from members out there, of how? What is the most effective way we think we can actually hold this government to account? I think uh, an idea of basic kindergarten ethics, don't hit people and take their stuff, needs to be applied to the government also. Yeah. Uh, and that really needs to be a main focus of the planning of the political systems, is, is it based on violence? That should always be the first question. I'd get a bunch of people together and march across Canada. <laughs> <laughs> get on that one. All right. <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you.